<laughs> oh, soup! Super! Soup! Super! Get it? That's not a soup, that's a stock. Oh, well then, it's, um... Peachy? Yeah, it's peachy, Steve. And do you know what else is peachy? You can be replaced. No, I can't, because nobody else would work with you, Wells. Oh, you think so, eh? As a matter of fact, I happen to have somebody standing by in the wings right now to replace you. And who's that? I'll show you who. Meet Gilbert. He doesn't talk back to me, and he laughs at my jokes. Gilbert! Oh, I've had enough of this. I'm out of here. Well then, Gilbert, what should we prepare on One Chef, One Critic today? Oh, I see. A lemon, something zesty. I like the way you think, Gilbert. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, yum. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Well, Steve, I'm delighted you're making stock today because stock is actually very important in cooking, isn't it? Absolutely, Carl. It's one of the most key ingredients in the kitchen, actually, whether you'll be making sauces or whether you'll be making soups. And what a stock is, is a liquid where you would add bones to it or fresh vegetables. Um, if you don't have any bones left over from your roast on the weekend, I will go to the store if I'm making chicken stock, buy a whole chicken, debone it, and with the protein, I would use it for something else. And with our bones, I would make my stock with it. And you can also make fish stock. Right? Absolutely, absolutely, Carl. Just use fish bone. bones. Just use fish bones, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, after you've uh, simmered all of these uh, solids, uh, they have to be gotten rid of, right? Absolutely, Carl. So what I would have in my kitchen, or I do have in my kitchen, is a nice fine strainer to get rid of all those solids out there. Or depending on what you're making, you can have a coarser one as well. Okay. Uh, and the one point we should make also is that you do not put salt in a stock. That's absolutely correct, Carl. You would put the salt in at the last minute when you made your sauces and things like that, just to Fine. Exactly. Great stuff. Okay, well, coming up on the program today, we have as our special guest the Honorable Dwight Ball. He is the leader of the Liberal Party of Newfoundland and Labrador, and we'll be talking to Mr. Ball about his life today. And what are we going to be cooking? We're going to be making a beautiful veal masala. Oh, excellent. And our guest chef today is Jeremy Charles of Raymond's Restaurant. He's going to show us how to make cavatelli pasta. Stick around. For a complete listing of One Chef, One Critic recipes, wine lists, and more, check out our website. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600 or send us an email at onechef.onecritic at rci.rogers.com. And we are very happy to welcome Mr. Dwight Ball to One Chef, One Critic. Welcome, Dwight. It's great to be here, Carol. Well, uh, Stephen, what are we going to be preparing for this hungry gentleman? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got some beautiful veal chops, as you can see here, they're Dwight, and we're going to uh, flour them, and we're going to be making a veal marsala, and uh, we'll be serving them on the top of some garlic mashed potatoes, which Carl will make, so uh, let's get started. Those then. look absolutely mm, They're divine, aren't they? My oh goodness. My goodness. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So we'll just put a little bit of oil in there, and, and Carl, you, you can do that. Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes there? with some garlic in there as okay. well, and uh, all I'm going to do is just season the flour and we'll dredge that in there and I'm going to get you to uh, turn them over until they're nice and golden brown as well so to speak so Dwight, that I can manage <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you do any cooking I was just going to ask do you well, do any cooking at all not really Carol I kind of like to enjoy the uh, fruits of the people that spend time in the kitchen not really spend time there myself <laughs> So what did, you, what did you do as a kid? Uh, obviously you probably weren't interested in cooking, like most boys aren't interested in cooking, except people like me, who it's kind of a passion, but uh, did you have any hobbies when you were a kid growing up? Uh, well, we grew up in Deer Lake, of course, and so like most you know, kids on the West Coast, and really anywhere in our province, it was, you know, whatever, we, we made the best of every season, so yeah. it was summertime, it was a lot of softball, in wintertime it was a lot, you know, played hockey and a lot of winter sports, of course, and still manage, even at this age, from time to time to do a little bit of that, except in the summertime right now, it's, if I get a, a few hours, I spend it on a, a salmon river, it's kind of what I enjoy, oh, nice. but yeah, it's yeah. very nice. Yeah. Now, who cooks the salmon? That's well, <laughs> well I, you know, I did say I didn't spend a whole lot of time in the kitchen, but, you know, again, being from the West Coast and then enjoying all the seasons, one thing I'm not shy to do is have one, a boil up in the, uh, in, outside oh. in, the, in the country from oh, time to yeah. time. We've done a lot yeah. of that over the years. Yeah. 
that's kind of part of being a Newfoundlander anyway. It you is. Have it a, is. You absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There we go. So don't feel shy there, uh, Dwight. You can have a look at them underneath and you can flip them over if you wish. I'll give that to you just in case you want to touch the pan at all. I just uh, want to talk about this, uh, Steve. Uh, so what you did was you, put, you cut the head off this garlic ball. Indeed, I did cut it. I did cut, cut it off and then just put some olive oil on the top of that, some salt and pepper. And then roasted that in the oven so that's nicely roasted garlic. That's great. And so all I have to do now to incorporate into the uh, mashed potatoes you is just be able to squeeze. There you go. The bulb like so, and they all pop out. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? And he thought he had a hard job to do this oh, morning, yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> Looks easy to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Roasted, gar roasted garlic is pretty darn good. Yeah. Absolutely. It's why I imagine Deer Lake was a great place to grow up because. You know, it, it, it's a small town, but yet it, it had certain amenities, let's say. I know there was a movie theater there, because I spent many a summer in Deer Lake going to the, what's it called, the Roxy? Or? The Roxy Theater, yeah. Yeah, it was a, <laughs> yeah, the lineups, and I can still, when I think of the Roxy Theater, I can still smell the popcorn, you oh, know, yeah. That, yeah, the, yeah. that experience as you walk through there. And of course, that was family owned. Of course, And yeah. like most, uh, you know, theaters right now, they've, uh, they've changed a lot. Course, the Roxy yeah. is now closed and the building is, is yeah. down, but right next to the Roxy Theater there was this famous takeout that we would the all spot. go to. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So you remember. Oh my goodness, do so. I ever, because they used to serve like this uh, loose hamburger meat on, on, on chips. Absolutely. And, uh, and there was a wicket like on the side of the building and you'd go up to the wicket and put your order in and out would come this cardboard plate with chips piled high and then on top of that would be a couple of spoonfuls yeah. of uh, loose hamburger meat. Exactly. <laughs> Fabulous. Oh, I can taste it, was, it now. It was a tradition and you know when people of course moved away over the years and as we went away to go to school, it was always usually the first stop when you got back. <laughs> Home, <laughs> that's, right. Yeah. that's right. Yeah. No, I have great memories of Deer Lake, I must say. Um, but so it's grown. It's grown over the years now, and of course, largely because of the the airport and you know yeah. things like that. That people now, with such a huge mobile workforce, people you know working in Labrador and working in Alberta. And people now, uh, Deer Lake's grown as a community and all the amenities and the commercial development that's grown up around it. So it is a, a great place to live for me. So you kind of, you, you you're, you're the exception really because most people who grow up in small town Newfoundland, they move away. But you, you stayed and, and you went into the pharmacy business, did you not? I, I did and, and actually when I went away it was, I didn't even give myself too many other options. It was like, I, yeah, I can't wait to go back home. Yeah, I, this is what I, I'm I do. enjoyed that. Yeah. And really, when I look at my family, my brothers and my sisters, and we've all done the same thing. So I'm fortunate from a family perspective to, to have all my brothers and sisters just live within sure. a few minutes. So, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we're in the kitchen today. Usually on a Sunday, we gather at you know typically my sister's place, and That's right. you know she'll have the meals prepared, and we'll help out. And you know people are just. Get in yeah. the lineup and pick up your turkey and yeah, your potatoes. Yeah, yeah, you do your yeah. thing. So, Fabulous. It's, it's so did you tradition. do the pharmacy program at Mont? Yes, it was in St. John's at the time and part of the old uh, College of uh, Trades and Technology oh, at the right. time. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And part of the campus was actually uh, on Topsail Road. Yes, it that's moved true. out there. So we uh, we moved around a bit and you know moving in from the west coast just being 16 years old at the time it was uh, it was a big change for me. I bet, yeah. And moved to the big city. It moved to the big city <laughs> and big move with Yeah. <laughs> and what a lot of people don't know that people when I left high school I was actually on graduation day, I was five foot three and ninety five pounds. Oh, wow. So after finishing pharmacy, I went back home and I was like six foot two hundred and ten pounds. Oh my gosh! So you know it, yeah. what they say in Deer Lake would be that the only person that left there went to fog and came back bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now <laughs> yeah. uh, while that's nicely uh, sautéing up there, I'm just going to add some prosciutto, which I'm uh, cut into that nice thin strip, so that's going to give it a little bit more flavour. And then we'll remove the veal out of there. Then I'm going to add the mushrooms to it and some masala. Nice. And bring yeah. it all together. Yeah. Welcome to together very, very nicely, actually. So did you, did you have an interest in science, or well, what motivated you to go into pharmacy? Well, I, I did have an interest in science, but my brother, my oldest brother, who uh, unfortunately uh, passed away a few years ago because of kidney disease, oh, and, but he was, he was very instrumental in, in helping me make a mm -hmm. decision 
at that time in my life. Mm -hmm. And he had, he had some exposure uh, to some people that he knew in pharmacy. Mm -hmm. I'd only ever known one pharmacist. <laughs> and yeah. so, uh, but you know, through the combination of that family and, and you know, my brother's influence, I decided to, hey, uh, give it a try. And I yeah, did. Yeah. And I'm certainly proud of that. It's been yeah. great to me. And we've been able to, you know, from a business point of view, build on the community pharmacies and get into you know many other things over the years mm -hmm. as a result of that as a foundation yeah. it's like it's like um, it's like a lot of uh, prof uh, professions there will always be a need for pharmacists <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it probably was a pretty good choice you made it was and i enjoyed it it was yeah. early you know big, late 70s it was very much a different profession than it is now and yeah. it's been exciting to watch the transition because i did uh, have, have some time to be the president of the Canadian National Pharmacists Association. Oh, got an opportunity to represent yep. you know, can Canadian pharmacists on the world stage. So that was uh, that was. So uh, did you have to do to some international traveling uh, at that point, or? Oh yeah, fair amount, fair amount. We did, and got us into Portugal and into Spain, and you know many other, especially European countries. We had a great relationship and. One of the most interesting times for me as president of the Canadian Pharmacists Association was around the early debate on Obamacare. Oh, and so they, uh, they brought a delegation of Canadians down to, uh, you know, to see where our model of pharmacy fit yeah. into and, and what the difference would be. So that was, that was an interesting time Absolutely. for me. Absolutely, yeah. Steve, what do you think? I think that's perfect now. Okay. I think you're coming on quite well there. That's, pr that's high praise. Yeah. <laughs> and that looks pretty perfect mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to duck out and see if we can get a nice wine to go with this. I'll be back. Perfect. So when you do the cookouts, is it, is it just tea and beans and bologna or is it a, a game or? Well, Steve, as you know, if you're going to boil up and you're on a snowmobile, it's yeah. pretty tough not yeah. to have a slice of bologna somewhere <laughs> yeah. hidden away. And exactly. Some of the guys, they like to take it to Capelin and, yeah, uh, as yeah, you would dry yeah, Capelin. Yeah, but yeah. These, are, these are memories that I would have going right back to my father. And yeah, the, that yeah, was exactly. uh, He's uh, taking us on little snowmobile rides or any you know, little walks in. Uh, trips in the following mm, year, and yeah. I think you can still smell, smell it. it. And you can uh, leave from your own back door and away you go. Absolutely. Yeah. So we were fortunate to be able to do that and created a lot of great memories for us and our family over the years. Hey, Hi, Jeremy. Carol. Well, this is the Jeremy Show today. We've got Jeremy Charles coming up later on the show to do a pastor. It's your lucky us. day. It's my lucky Double day. Dose. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing veal marsala today. Uh, so okay. we've got, you know, that heavy uh, marsala wine. And uh, of course, it's kind of a kind of a beefy dish, I guess. Uh, certainly, the saucing w will be. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Well, I actually went not over the top too heavy. I kind of played a little bit more with the acidity side of things mm -hmm. and something to maybe cut through some of the, the sweetness of the the marsala itself. So I picked pinots. Ah. But pinots that tend to have a fair bit of fruit up front, but really good acidity. Nothing too sweet or cloying, but just really well made, really balanced. Uh, so to start off um, right here, this is the Peely Island Canadian Pinot. Mm -hmm. um, classic producer. I mean, these guys are doing amazing wines across the board, whites and reds. But their Pinot, this is one of the best value Pinots I think you can get at the liquor store. I mean, it's really? under $20, which is a rarity. And I, I'm always the one sort of preaching that it's hard to find a cheap Pinot. This is one, and I think you'll be really happy with it. Very Burgundian styled. Next one up from Tasmania, Cockfighter's Ghost. Uh, this is... Tasmania has a lot in common with really Canada's climate or say even Burgundy's climate uh, where it is pretty cool. Yeah, it's yep. a cooler yep. region. Uh, so cool climate Pinot for this. A lot of fruit, great acidity. You'll notice a lot of sort of bright cherry flavors to it, but it's not like an Australian Pinot Noir at all. It's its, its own unique thing and really, really delicious. And then last but not least, Norman Hardy, Canada's probably best known producer now and especially for Pinot Noir. This is Burgundian all the way. A lot of fruit, great acidity, just super well balanced. This is a beautiful wine too. I'm going to go with Norman Hardy. Great choice. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Norman Hardy, and uh, I'm sure this is going to be a great choice. Thanks a lot. Enjoy it. Okay, now we'll just take the last piece of our mushrooms and our prosciutto ham. We've got a beautiful reduction there with our uh, masala wine. So let's go and visit both Dwight and Carl in the dining room, see what they think. There we are, a nice red wine to go with this veal. Mm. And boy, that is a, that's a, <laughs> that's a manly meal. Mm, absolutely. Um, let's have a taste and see uh, how this goes down. It looks super mm. tender, which it is, I can tell. Oh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Not much resistance there. No, no, none whatsoever. Nice medium rare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boy, easy. It's great. But that is really, really good. Dwight, um, you, were, you were mentioning when you were head of the Pharmacy Association nationally, you got to travel to different countries. Was there any one country that impressed you in terms of the look of the country and well, weather or whatever? <coughs> yeah, for sure. One, the trip that I remember the most would be uh, to Istanbul. I got a chance to go to Turkey back about seven, eight years ago, and the place was just so, so busy. and. It was a popular location for all pharmacists at the time, but what was really interesting for me as a Canadian pharmacist was that we were able to help the country, you know, uh, bring what we had, what we were doing, doing in Canada, and bring that into uh, the Turkish environment. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, it was, there was, you know, young pharmacists from, we had one guy, one young guy who was so inspiring from Iran. Oh, yes. And I think of all my times in traveling globally, position that he, when he took his position, that he was going to change the pharmacy environment in Iran. Mm -hmm. It inspired the old group and that actually got into next year's convention mm -hmm. and on and on it went. So it was, it just goes to show you can make a difference when you uh, I suppose you to it. Yeah. I suppose in some of these countries which don't have the economy of the, you know, larger Western G7 powers, <laughs> um, it, it's difficult probably to, to get drugs, certain drugs. For sure. Access is extremely important. And then when you access medication, you're not even certain what you're accessing. There's so much counterfeiting that's happening in many of those mm -hmm. countries. So we can be thankful as Canadians that we have a great, you know, we can trust our medication supply and, standard and, and the yeah. standard that, you know, comes with it. So we've been, our, our job at the time, what we wanted to do was actually duplicate some of that stuff so that we can help some of those emerging countries. Yeah. Now, uh, just briefly, politics. Um, you obviously at some point made the decision to go into uh, politics. Was there, was there a particular person who maybe, you know, inspired you or was a mentor of sorts who yeah, many along the way one my grandfather was always uh, involved <laughs> okay. in politics so it probably started there at a young age my father was always involved and all my brothers but got very close to Rick Woodford over the years Rick was our yeah. MHA for you know 17 years and worked closely with Rick and when the time came for Rick to make a decision mm -hmm. that he would move on it was then that I decided that you know I would step up yeah. and get yeah. involved yeah, well, uh, and the rest is history, as they say. <laughs> um, what would you have? Well, what, what would you have to say to some young person out there? You know, a lot of people have uh, not great opinions of politicians and journalists, and maybe a few other people. But um, what would you say about getting involved in, in the political uh, field? It is very rewarding, and most people that you touch and, and you speak to in the political role, they do appreciate yeah, the work that's yeah, being exactly. done. So I would encourage any young person to get involved, and we've done a lot of that by reaching out and talking to those young people. And that's, that's great advice. Okay, well thank you very much, Dwight Ball, for being Cheers. on the program today. And we will be back with Chef Jeremy Charles of Raymond's. Well, Raymond's Restaurant on Water Street is one of the finest fine dining restaurants we have in the city. Uh, some would argue that it's the best fine dining restaurant we have. Uh, it's famous for its classic decor, exemplary service, exquisite cuisine. And speaking of the cuisine, uh, I think it's fair to describe it as fresh and local. In fact, I think that's probably the mantra of our guest right now, Jeremy Charles. Uh, fresh and local. You are the executive chef and it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Great, Jeremy. Yeah. What are we going to do today? Uh, what are you going to do? Yeah, I thought today would be a great day to show uh, showcase uh, wild game. So we're going to do some uh, lovely snared rabbits uh, from the west coast of the island. Mm -hmm. And um, just going to show you how we make uh, a lovely cheese from Central Dairy's milk. That's exciting. Uh, yeah, okay, started then. Yeah, so basically uh, we make our ricotta, which we have here, and um, it's the base for our pasta and we form it into a, a lovely dough with semolina and double mm -hmm. flour, a few eggs. And we have a cavatelli maker, which is uh, easily purchased through uh, 
online purchase mm -hmm. or whatnot. And, and Jeremy, this is, this is essentially flour, eggs, some water. Yeah, and a ricotta cheese. cheese. And, and, the, and the ricotta cheese. Yeah, and uh, a little bit not of... Not that difficult to make, really. Very simple to make at yeah. home. And yeah. uh, it's a, a pasta that, uh, you know, goes, goes well with a lot of different mm -hmm. ragus and whatnot. So, so uh, how does this roll, then? Does it go straight through? Or? Yeah, it's, uh, so you form your dough and uh, you just push it through the cavatelli so maker. Very simple. You know, you make a technique of just rolling them fairly, th mm -hmm. fairly mm -hmm. thin. And you want to make sure it gets in through... Uh, the gap there and then you just turn the wheel it's oh, pretty yeah uh, <laughs> you know so uh, that is cool yeah yeah yeah, yeah. very so very cool you're left with these uh, yeah. beautiful Edges. noodles yeah and uh so that's the base for our, our they kind of look today. like little screws yeah <laughs> yeah cavatelli it's almost like a gnocchi yeah. too yeah. i guess you'd yeah. say yeah. so yeah. yeah so what we've done there sorry go ahead go on, so what do we do with that we blanch it off so then? yeah but basically we have our pasta we uh got that shaped and we want to yeah. blanch those off into a bowl, boiling salted, salted water okay so we got that in there for about mm -hmm. you know two minutes yeah or so so uh we wait till they come come to the surface and then mm -hmm. um yeah when they're ready we just uh want to make sure they're not sticking together and whatnot move them around a bit absolutely so we uh Got that going. Then we're going to transfer those into our pan, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which I okay, got right so here. So we've got the pan. We need to clear clear a little space for the pan. Sure. Yes. Why don't we'll we just right. move, Is that all right? Yeah. Push okay. it over a bit. Oh, there you go. There we are. Okay. <laughs> good, good. You so, yeah. see, you can tell we didn't rehearse this bit. But yeah, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. So nice. Yeah. So uh, just remove them from the. Uh, yeah, from your water. Water. Yeah. Yeah, and we can just pop that out of here. Perfect. That's all good. So yeah, we're here with our noodles, mm -hmm. so behind, and uh, so we'll just bring that up to heat. Again, so what we're going to add here now is some uh, some milk plus, some carrot, onion, and celery. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to add that to the pan. Nicely diced, that's yeah. That's it's a nice sure. little dice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we're going to add some of the uh, the rabbit jus, okay. just uh, the braising jus from the rabbit. We'll just bring that up to heat. And uh, we're going to add our braised rabbit. Oh, that looks beautiful. Just braising white wine, fresh herbs. And uh, yeah, so there's no oh. buckshot in there. No buckshot. Okay, there's no snared, snared, rabbit. snared rabbits. Okay, that shoe no smells glorious. Yeah, it's uh, you know brings it all together. It does actually. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Okay. Just get that going there. I'm gonna add some uh, lovely just roasted shiitake mushrooms. Mm -hmm, you can use mm -hmm. button. If you have bacon at home, it's always a lovely option as well. Oh, a game with bacon. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And uh, some fresh chives. Just gives a uh, color, color and again, I love the flavor chives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We got our Parmesan in here as well. Oh, that's divine. And uh, yeah, you can get a good smell out of it now. Indeed. And yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll just bring this together very quickly. And uh, yeah, this is a real staple at the restaurant. We get a lot of people looking for, for rabbit and wild game. And, exactly. And uh, Alexis Templeton's been doing a beautiful job making plates for us. Oh so my we, uh, goodness! Oh really? really? That's that's, a, that's one yeah. of her yeah. plates or their plates, I should say. So local food, Excellent. local yeah. plateware. You know, we try to do it all. So I think it's pretty much ready to plate up. So yeah. uh, go right ahead. Yeah, Oops, yeah, sir. So uh, excellent. Um, yeah. So again, you get wow. that lovely <laughs> smell of everything oh, going you on. You do indeed. Uh, again, pasta is a big staple at the restaurant. We usually garnish with uh, some fresh Parmesan, some breadcrumbs. And there you have it. Could be straight out of uh, Tuscany. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 no, but seriously, that, yeah. that's real kind of peasant cuisine, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, you know. From that part of the world. Anyway, uh, listen, thanks so much for being on the program, Jeremy. Thank, thanks for having You've me. You've been uh, uh, absolutely wonderful. And that's it for this edition of... <laughs> one Chef. One Critic. Perfect, now it's my turn. Mm. It's probably not all Oh, hot, got but, it. Uh, oh. I never even seasoned it. Delicious. <laughs> so. No, you didn't need to. You need a bit it's of... It's all there. Okay. Well, there's your lunch then for mm. today. Absolutely extraordinary. That's a bit too much, but yeah. Oh, divine. Oh, good. <laughs> what a wonderful dish. Dora, you could have a course one like this. And never put salt in a stock. Absolutely, Cal. Absolutely not. Shoot. <laughs> that was going so well. We're fine. And do you know what else is peachy? You can be replaced. No, I can't. No, I can't. Because nobody no, else can work. do it with you, Wells. <laughs> that should be the easiest line ever. Yeah, it should, yeah, it should be the easiest. <laughs>